What's up guys, welcome back from the Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video next match, Cross Balanced Cup. It's um, pretty much starting to, ch to uh, yeah, shape up, right? Um, next match up here we have Mermail Atlanteans versus Infernity. So left side of the top 16 bracket, as you know, uh, all of these decks on the left side already lost one match, uh, starting from the top 16 playoffs. So both decks can still win the tournament, right? But um, again, they have to win like every match from now on. So the matchup of today, we have Infernities from 2000. 2014, the Exceed version, by the way, as you saw, as you know, Sehabis is from Worlds, the World Championship back in 2014. Soul Charge, etc. Ridiculous list, by the way. The second list, as you see here, is Mermail. Atlanteans from 2016 having access to, well, you know, pre-Master uh, Rule 4 being Master Rule 3. Multiple extra deck zones without the needs of links and <laughs> the shenanigans of Bahamut Shark. Into totally awesome, especially if you can add up things like Instant Fusion and let's not forget Triple Prince for more consistency. So which deck has the advantage? Well, as we saw from previous video, or as we are seeing from previous video is that people are preferring Infernities over Mermel Atlanteans, so 56% uh, over 43%. Personally, I felt that before this particular matchup, I was like, well, Mermil Atlanteans might have the slight advantage over something like Infernities being the, the older deck, but that's, well, that doesn't really say too much, right? But mainly if I'm looking at the extra deck, and that's, I think, or I feel the weakness of Infernities is the, the power of the extra deck. As I mentioned in the previous video, where, you know, Infernities was uh, in it as well, or one of the previous matches uh, featuring Infernities. Then again, if I look at uh, Atlantean Mermails or Mer Atlanteans, if Infernities is able to set up multiple negations, multiple negations and interruptions, it will be definitely be a hard, uh, next to Dweller by the way, it will definitely be a hard time for, um, for yeah, Mermail Atlanteans. So anyway, uh, I'm playing with Infernities and this is definitely a good opening hand. I'm not really sure if this is full combo. Uh, I think I already used up a Soul Charge, I guess, since I'm seeing a Soul Charge here on the left side, you know, as an image. So I guess I already used up a Soul Charge. And thanks to the Field Spell, the, the Archfiend Field Spell, you can turn your Necromancer into another level 4, you know, like Archfiend, to get another Search. And basically this means that having two uh, Archfiends on my side of the field, there is um, again, very important is to not being able, or at least not give my opponent the option to kaiju me. Again, kaiju getting rid of the attack position, uh, Archfiend, Infinity Archfiend could potentially shut down the Infinity Barrier. Again, that could be important. Here in this case, ah, the, the, uh, was it like, um, uh, what did force out, at least what, um, I, what, was it the Twin Twister? I believe it was a Twin Twister that forced out the Infinity Barrier. And, um, okay, well, Raikeki as well, yeah, Raikeki as well, right? And another Infinity, at least another uh, Twin Twister, like, <laughs> that's crazy stupid stuff. But I think, well, you know, I, I had to... Uh, well, and yeah, indeed, it was this duel, right? <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's just a, such, such a crazy duel, but um, used, I think, the Forbidden Lens to protect my Livier. Yeah, indeed, that's what happened. And uh, had to protect Livier, etc., etc. But the thing is that, long story short, I think I got robbed in this duel. <laughs> it's crazy, crazy stuff. The top deck instant fusion as well, and one instant fusion equals, uh, you know, the shenanigans of Bahamut Shark into totally awesome, and if there was like, let's say, a Dragoons in the graveyard, that equals into another search, and potentially, well, you know, searching, um, like, Abyss Megalo, oh, it, it's game. <laughs> what can I do? It's, it's stupid, stupid stuff. So again, going first, and I get max seat, and I, I, I'm like, well, it, it, it's just, it, it isn't my day. <laughs> it's, it's not my day. Anyway, so I'm going to end with Dweller, so giving the opponent an extra plus, I guess, out of the max seat. But uh, Dweller was needed to prevent, uh, at least making sure, I guess, that I would survive this turn. Even though, again, there, if, if Mermel Atlanteans has, like, a superb broken hand to even OTK through a... Uh, through a dweller, then it's like it's like whatever, right? But it's, it's <laughs> I think it's the same story here. Even though uh, being under dweller, being able to go for Bahamut Shark into totally awesome, into like a big beat stick, being the Abyss Megalo, that's game. That's game. What can I do? During next turn here, normal summoning the uh, what is it called? Uh, the Sea Serpent. Ah, oh, Deep Sea Diva, man. <laughs> it has it has been a rough day. Please forgive me, <laughs> but like, what can I do here? Multiple B6, and again, if, if this wasn't game, there was still the option to end with Gaios as well, right? So, okay, 
starting fresh, gain number 3. And this is definitely a good opening hand. I have the ability to go for um, Laval Val Chain, set up the graveyard, and get an early Necromancer to my side of the field, and that's definitely good. The Instant Fusion being the extra level 4, and this is almost full combo. As in, you know, using uh, double Necromancer, going for Levier, Levier, getting back one of your banished uh, Street Patrols, putting it back in your graveyard, and then, first of all, minusing yourself with Diamond Direwolf to get some free space, so you can use your um, your launcher, right? Launcher, or, yeah, indeed, it was launcher. And uh, most importantly, again, ending with the Dweller, but small weakness here, if there is a potential um, Kaiju, there is a potential Kaiju on the... Uh, Infernity um, uh, Archfiend try to shut down the barrier and then worst case scenario that could be f like a follow-up uh, play of, of, of Twin Twister or whatever but what are the chances right as we have seen in the previous duels as well. So here I'm definitely forced to use Break. Art Knight was a cool play, you know, like Art Knight has that built-in capability to protect itself and I think this was a good play on my part not to use Infernity Break, right, due to especially the triple instant fusion as a possible follow-up play. But um, in the long run, again, this should be my dual right with, I, I think I have um, Infernity Barrier still set? I think so. Yeah, indeed. And uh, multiple breaks as well. And of course, the Gorgon is okay, I guess, against something like Mermails. Prevent, uh, you know, marksmen or infantry for those targets. And uh, still have the protection of, indeed, barrier and multiple breaks for the potential interruptions during their turn. So again, very solid here. But as we saw earlier, it's, <laughs> it's not game as, um, you know, like Infernities would have uh, felt like, you know, like opening multiple searches, multiple of all of our chains, and even then there is still the potential of Maul's destruction. So Mermils opting to go first, that's fine. Mermils, uh, the good old, Mer well, good old Atlantean Mermils is like that definitely can uh, go first and go second. Going first, I feels a bit iffy because of the potential dead hands. Then again, if the deck is able to open with Prince, well, best case scenario, Prince and or, uh, well, or Genix Undyne and Instant Fusion, that sets a very rough start. Well, a, go a good start, but a rough start for me, that is. So anyway, so Mermel's going first again. And this feels, like, uh, this, well, this opening hand, I'm not really sure, do I have, uh, I, I think I uh, only got two searches, I think I hard opened the barrier, and uh, I think I searched the double, um, double break, I think, but again, the follow-up here is, is again, mind-blowing, ridiculous, right? I mean, did he know that there was a barrier? Not, not really sure, or... Uh, the the twin twister on uh, both um, uh, breaks I think yeah both breaks indeed yeah my my, my set here is the at least my last set this is, is the barrier of course and the thing here is, is with in infernities and as I felt from previous matches as well is that even and I, and I mentioned before in this video is that infernities is that they you know that they can definitely have like very solid openings but if they're uh, at least if they're losing their field to mass destruction like dark or by geki harpy Feather Duster, Heavy Storm, Twin Twister, those cards, it's very hard for Infernities to recover from that, since, again, they 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 wasted their, well, wasted, they used up their entire uh, engine as well, and their engine, I mean, multiple breaks and the one of barrier, so, Infernities exceed, lose this one, but, uh, I mean, if, if you look at game number one and two, what can, well, what could I have done, right? It, it, it doesn't really make much sense, but that, that, that's how it is, I guess. But it, it's it's well, it's <laughs> hard finding the words. But it's it's um, yeah, that, that, well, that's how it is, I guess. So eventually, Infernities are out here in this particular matchup. They are out of the tournament, and Mermail Atlanteans will move on here to the top. For, I guess, yeah, on the loser side of the bracket, the left side of the bracket. But again, as I mentioned before, Dex, or the Dex on the left side, can still win this particular tournament from, but yeah, again, from now on, they still have to win all of the matches, right? So, in the next matchup, we have uh, totally awesome heroes, again, on the left side, versus two Dracos. Again, a matchup, uh, both Dex quite, uh, you know, very recent Dex in this year's Cross Balanced Cup or Pentagons, each other, two Dracos from 2018. 
versus totally awesome heroes from 2017. So again, like always, feel free to leave your prediction. Which deck is going to win totally awesome heroes versus true Dracos? Personally, I, I don't know. I mean, going first is definitely very important, but looking at the super anti-destruction and disruption and uh, negation from true Dracos, I feel that true Dracos might have the slight advantage, but who knows? Okay, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching and feel free to leave a card or a like if you enjoyed the video. Beat him signing out. Peace.